Uh, afternoon to all uh, and warm welcome to everyone present here. The Institute of Indian Foundrymen, Southern Region and Chennai Chapter is delighted to join jointly organize a technical program on an online platform. Today topic is harmonics, uh, TNERC uh, -E regulations for HT consumers which will be the 8th program for SR and the 35th program for Chennai chapter. And we are pleased to have Mr. Sandal Kumar, Managing Director of Blue Moon Castings and a person in Tika, uh, a well-known um, uh, person who, who has a wide knowledge on this subject as a today's presenter. The harmonics are the growing concern in the industrial sector and which increase increasing use of electrical equipments it is an imp imperative to under understand the TNRC regulations for ST consumers. Consumers, this technical program aims to shed light on the issue and provide valuable insight for all the attendees. We are thankful to Mr. Sandal Kumar of Blumen Castings for general, uh, generously sparing his time and sharing his expertise with us. We are confident that his presentation will provide a comprehensive understanding on the topic and help us in addressing the critical issue. Once again, we extend a warm welcome to all the participants and hope this technical program proves to be insightful and informative for everyone. Thank you. Now I request Mr. Siddharth to give an introduction of Mr. Sandal Kumar. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, good afternoon, good afternoon all. Uh, welcome again to the uh, webinar for our uh, weekly webinar uh, session. Uh, a few uh, words about Mr. Sendil Kumar. Dr. Sendil Kumar is he is the managing director of Blue Moon Castings Private Limited, and is located in Etupalim Road, Matalam Palayam, Coimbatore. Uh, as Muthu Kumar sir indicated, Sendil sir is a person wearing multiple hats. He has been in the foundry industry since 1993 producing gray and ductile iron castings. He is the immediate past secretary for Tamil Nadu Electricity Consumers Association, TICA. He is the IAF's Southern Region Council member. He is also the chairman for Raw Mac India Trade Fair. He, is, he has two international journal publications. And during his tenure at TICA as secretary and treasurer, he has interacted with IEEE, uh, USA, uh, Central Electricity Authority, New Delhi, Aptel New Delhi, TNERC Chennai, Tanjetco and uh, uh, Tanjetco for and regarding every, various electricity matters. And he is a technically sound person with a solid background in mechanical in his undergrad. He has done his ME industrial engineering and his PhD in mechanical engineering focusing in foundry. So I welcome you again, sir. And uh, uh, we are very, very uh, happy to have you and have a delightful session. Thank you so much, uh, Kumar ji our chairman of SR region and uh, Chennai chapter for giving me an opportunity to take up this uh, uh, session with our foundry fraternity. Thank you so much. First, I would like to uh, give acknowledgement to our mentor, CR Swaminathan, who was instrumental in uh, giving uh, this uh, foundry fraternity uh, association called Tamil Nadu Electricity Company. Uh, it's a delightful experience to work with uh, Tika, and we are very happy to be associated with uh, IAF also, being a member. Uh, thank you so much, sir, uh, once again, and I'll start my uh, uh, session right now. So today's webinar, I'll be covering uh, introduction, terms and definitions, the governing standards, rules and regulations, how to go about measurements, and uh, a simple uh, introduction to mitigation that is how to solve uh, harmonics issues so harmonics comes in a field called power quality power quality is nothing but uh, quality of voltage we buy voltage from the distribution company or our electricity board we don't buy anything else from them. It is the voltage what we, we purchase from them by paying money. 11 kV, 22 kV, 33 kV or whatever it is. So how strong we buy is called the ampere and uh, how long 
V by is the quantum which goes as a kilowatt hour and uh, translates to money by the way of our uh, CC bills. So what we expect from uh, an electricity board is a pure sinusoidal waveform, voltage as a pure sinusoidal wave and with an impedance of zero ohms. We also need a frequency in the bandwidth of 49.9 to 50.05 hertz. This is what is expected. But uh, as everyone of you know, we don't get uh, such a waveform which in real life scenario and the deviations are existing. The deviations are voltage deviations, frequency deviations and waveform deviations. So I'll take up uh, what, what is the uh, details about these deviations. So voltage deviations, there are swell, sag, clicker, spikes, under voltage and over voltage. So definition of these are given uh, in the slide. And the frequency deviations are low frequency and uh, high frequency. Uh, frequency uh, last uh, 20th December, it went very uh, dangerously fluctuating and uh, it was observed. And after that, uh, our Central Electricity Regulatory Commission has issued regulations to limit the frequency fluctuations in the interest of grid security. And it has also made provisions to impose penalty and generators and discounts to maintain the frequency. So what we call as harmonics is called sine waveform deviations. A pure sine wa waveform, how it deviates, it is categorized into three parts. One is called harmonics, second one is called interharmonics, and third one is called supraharmonics. Harmonics are generated by, all these three are generated by non-linear loads. In case of foundries, it is electric furnaces. In case of machine shops, it's CNC machines. In case of textile mints, it will be the AC drives, electronic welding machines, our fridges, um, our dishwashers, everything, even the LED lights, our UPS, everything are electronic loads which are which in turn generates harmonics, interharmonics and supraharmonics. Particularly, I'm uh, just touching upon supraharmonics because there is a large conversion from uh, conventional IC engines to electric vehicles. Where these electric vehicles are using fast charging, these fast chargers dump something called supraharmonics, which are high frequency harmonics in the grid, which is much more dangerous than the uh, above two. So what is a harmonic? The left one is a green one is a pure sinusoidal waveform. The right figure is the distorted waveform. So what a distortion happens here is called harmonic. This distortion is called harmonic. So frequency from 50 hertz to 2500 hertz is termed as harmonics. So it is an integer multiple, it's a whole number, 50 hertz, 100 hertz, 150 hertz, 200 hertz, like that to the, till 2500 hertz. So every 50 hertz is given a whole number. The first 50 hertz is what we get as a supply, which is given a number one, and the next 100 is given two, third 150 is given three, so on, until 50th harmonic, which is 2005. 500 hertz is being uh, tested and what we need to comply. So the next slide, how harmonics get added to the waveform is, this is the fundamental waveform, 50 hertz. These are third harmonic, fifth harmonic, seventh, ninth, even these harmonics add up to this waveform and the original waveform gets distorted like this. So what is about interharmonics? This is just for informational purposes. This is the, 50, this is the fundamental frequency, 50 hertz. This is the first, uh, second order, 100 hertz. This is the one for third order. In between, there will be frequencies, 60 hertz, 70, 80, 90. If these are present in a system, these are called interharmonics. Even this one, 
these are not uh, integer multiples these are discrete frequencies interharmonics normally comes in fabrication shops where welding is involved using uh, inverter based welding machines in foundries other than gray iron foundries we have not seen such interharmonics much in volume this is supra harmonics which is starting from 2000 hertz to 140000 hertz it's a very high frequency oscillations particularly in electric vehicle charging it happens and this you can see the frequency will be very high and these are called supra harmonics so harmonics are categorized as orders what first order second order till 50th order in that orders whole numbers there are three series one is called odd series second one is called even series and third one is called triplet series the general effect of harmonics is heating heating of conductors heating of transformers and all so the special characteristics of odd series is in addition to the heating effect it increases our i squared r losses which is called the power losses the even series usually cancels with the odd series and in excess it will be uh, creating lot of difficulties to the transformer we are using there will be dc current a presence of even series means there will be dc current in the circuit which is mostly due to faulty rectifiers or uh, uh, defective uh, diodes in the circuits so triplet series is mostly due to single phase non linear loads like our uh, computers or uh, other single phase machines which usually uh, overloads the neutral conductors neutral conductors are slightly uh, in reduced size we use in general but if those conductors are uh, overloaded that may be because of only triplet series so another one is rotation harmonic rotation so there is three sequences one is called the positive sequence second is called negative sequence and other one is called zero sequence so positive sequence uh, 4 7 10 13 16 like that Uh, positive sequence harmonics that means it is in line with the sequence of our supply uh, frequency this have only heating effect but a negative sequence such as 2 5 8 11 14 and all they reduce the torque of the motor so what happens the motor has to draw more current to maintain its rpm thereby your power consumption goes up so zero sequence uh, harmonics are 3 6 9 12 15 it may not be triplet series there are some uh, exemptions in triplet series these are uh, specifically categorized as zero sequence it has a heating effect and it increases the neutral current some people called no rotation for zero sequence harmonics no there is nothing called no rotation every harmonic will have a positive rotation or negative rotation zero sequence harmonics goes and combines with either of the two and has its own effect so what are the causes of this deviations generally it is because of the non linear loads non linear loads means furnaces vfds what we use in our uh, system we have to consider this as a energy system a transformer is in between we get supply from uh, electricity board there is a transformer in between then there will be our loads so our loads will be an energy system what we get from electricity board is an energy system so 50 hertz if we try to alter using non linear devices in our loads thereby there will be uh, loss of equilibrium and due to that there will be additional oscillations created and these oscillations are called harmonics harmonics are measured by a term called total harmonic distortion it is a relative contribution of harmonics to the sine wave so harmonics can cause vibrations buzzing equipment distortions and overheating 
So I have given already an examples of uh, nonlinear nodes. Go to the next topic. So where to measure harmonics? Do we have to measure harmonics in the machines? What we use like a furnace or a spinning frame or a motor? No, we have to measure harmonics only at the PCC. PCC is called point of common coupling. For an industry, a PCC is, is exactly the metering point or nearby the metering point. So all the regulations, standards, everything is for the PCC and not for the equipment used. This has to be very clearly understood. We have to measure only in the HT side, that is high voltage side, we have to measure it before our transformer. For some people, they will not be able to measure harmonics <coughs> with their own meters because they may not be using vacuum circuit breakers for in, in their HT side. So for them, they have to use a CTPT exactly like what electricity board is uh, using. This CTPT has to be installed and from this CTPT we can take uh, uh, wires and we can measure it. So this is for consumers who are having connected load of 1000 kV and below. For above 1000 kV, eh, they will be naturally having a VCB in their uh, circuit and VCB from the VCB they can tap, tap tappings from their CTPT and they can measure harmonics easily. Why this is particularly in, uh, told by me is because there are several 11 and 22 kV consumers with uh, below 1000 kV a load. For them, if they want to measure on their interest for controlling these harmonics, they may have to install a CTPT like this, which will be costing about 1.5 lakhs. So this is a comparison of uh, measurement between the low voltage side, which is our side, MV panel side, and the HV side. This is what I have taken. If we measure the putting a meter in our side, the current harmonics for which penalty is uh, imposed will be shown as failed. But if we measure in the HV side, which is the correct point, it will be it will be shown as pass. So this is so PCC where the harmonics is measured is a very important subject. We should not measure in the LV side and take corrective actions. So what to measure? It is called the first thing what we need to measure is uh, TDD, which is called total demand distortion. This is a ratio of the harmonic content up to 50th order summation expressed as percentage of maximum demand load current. Maximum demand load current is will be uh, detailed told in the coming slides. For measuring TDD, we need a software along with a meter. So without software, arriving at TDD will be difficult because there will be too many readings and the software will help us a lot to find it out within seconds. The difference between the earlier uh, harmonic regulations and currently what it is being practiced from 2014 onwards, I, based on IEEE 2014, is this the way TDD is calculated. See, TDD is right now for an example of 3, 3 amps uh, harmonic current. And the total uh, maximum demand current is 15 amps means it will be 20 percent. In the other cases, earlier it was measured like this. If we can see, they were taking the fundamental load current and they have been uh, arriving at, which is 30 percent. It's almost 10 percent more. So the regulations have been changed. Standards have taken effect in changing all these things. And right now, what we have to measure is the TDD. For voltage, it will be THD, that is total harmonic distortion for the voltage, which is expressed as percentage of the fundamental. 
So many people will be having low cost meters in their installation. Those meters will not measure the summated value of TDD or THDV. It will be giving an instantaneous value, which is an erroneous measurement. And please do not take any action based on those values, because it is at that instance what will be the harmonic current or voltage, which is not the thing mentioned in our regulation. So it is totally different. So low cost meters will not be useful for finding out the proper uh, harmonic compliances. One of the examples with uh, voltage harmonics, I would like to show this to everyone, everyone of you. It's with a six pulse furnace without any filtration. So brown color is the load variation in the furnace. It was switched on here and the full load it has gone. It was switched off again. The furnace went on again came down. So according to the load variations, there, there is no variation in the waveform of the voltage, voltage harmonic. This is independent of this load. So voltage harmonics is not dependent on the load. This is what this graph is trying to tell us. But in case of current, it will be different. This is in case of current where when the load drops down, the harmonic goes up. Again, this is an instantaneous value. It is not a continuous spectrum. It is an instantaneous value and this should not be considered. Just for understanding purposes, I have told the brown is the kilowatt of the furnace and the blue is the harmonic control. So, when the load is more, when the load is more, the harmonic content was less. When the load drops down, the harmonic content goes up. So, what are all the Indian rules and regulations? These, were, these are the Indian rules and regulations. 2007 onwards, the regulations has come. And again in 2010, then 2013, the current regulations are 2019-53 which is for below 33 kV consumers and 2019-54 is for the above 33 kV consumers and on September 23rd last year TNERC has given an amendment to the supply code where all the consumers, ST consumers are obligated to control the harmonics. So what are all the standards governing, international standards particularly? So for harmonics, it is IEEE 519. It, it was first given in 1981, then in 1992, then in 2014. And right now, what is in force is 2022. For measurement in instrumentation, we have to refer this standard IEC 61000-4-7. For measurement methods, 61,000-4-30 and for flicker measurements, this is for information purpose. Flicker is not uh, still, uh, we are not obligated for flicker. So how to measure voltage harmonics? I like to inform everyone, the current TNERC regulations does not impose penalty for violations in voltage harmonics. It doesn't mention about it. So I personally feel that there will not be any penalty if there are violations. Last time in 2014, for some people, uh, penalty was imposed on for voltage harmonics also, but this time it may not be for uh, uh, voltage. So it is categorized in three categories for LT consumers, which is below one voltage is below 1 kV. 1000 volts, then for HT consumers, 1000 volts to 69 kV, then for extra high consumers, uh, these are the three categories. I don't think there are any consumers with 161 kV and uh, high, very, very high voltage levels in India. So, individual harmonic is the individual order harmonics. For HT consumers, they have to maintain 3%. If the fifth harmonic, the limit will be 
and for the total harmonic distortion it will be 5 percent so it will be a joint responsibility of consumer and the discom discom is nothing but the electricity board so at pcc the system owners should limit line to neutral voltage as following 99 percent this i'll explain you in detail in the next slide this is the tabular column which we have arrived using those sentences told in the last of the slide. Say, for example, if a consumer is connected either in 11, 22, and 33 kV, his voltage, THD, voltage harmonic limit is 5%. So there will be two types of uh, integrations. Readings will be taken. One is on daily basis, and the other is for the whole week. So the integration is three seconds every three seconds there will be a reading recorded in the meter and the other reading will be every 10 minute a reader reading will be recorded for a three second integration the standard gives a multiplication value of 1.5 that is 5 into 1.5 is equal to 7.5 so there is a big relaxation in this we can go up to 7.5 percent for a daily three second value is what the standard says. So when it is a three second value, there will be 480 samples per day. What percentile means, it is not percentage, it is percentile means, 99th percentile means, there will be one percentile is allowed. That means 480 into 1% will be approximately 5 readings, we can exceed this 7.5 percentage. Similarly, for weekly, it will be 95th percentile. The limit is 5, that is multiplication factor is 1, so the limit is 5. Total number of samples for the whole week will be 1008 samples and out of which 50 samples can exceed this 5%. So it will be a much relaxed regulation than the older methods. It is not so strict. Earlier regulations was almost 100 percentile. So it is practically not possible for a consumer to comply with the old regulations. And again for individual orders, the limit is 3%. For daily readings, it is the limit converts to 4.5 because of 1.5 multiplication factor and still five samples they can exceed and for weekly reading it will be 50 samples with a three percent limit so it is much easier and possible now for people to comply with the standards and regulations before going into current harmonic measurements, which is TDD, I'd like to share a very simple formula, which is called short circuit ratio. It is IAC divided by IN. IAC is nothing but the short circuit current at your meter point or at your PCC. So this we may have to get it from the MRT people. And IL also, it, as it is measured in the HP side, we may have to get it from them. It will be a 12 month average. So, short circuit ratio, if it is given by them, it is easy for us to find out from where, which, uh, which is our limit. So, I'll be showing the next slide how this short circuit ratio will be used. So this is the TDD table I have taken only for till 69 kVA. Above 69 kVA there is something called table 3. People have to refer table 3 for the distortion limits, current distortion limits. So what I mentioned here is penalty not for individual orders. So these are the individual orders. These are the limits for individual orders. Say, for example, between 2 and 11. So, 2 
थ्री फोर फाइव सिक्स टिल टेंथ हारमोनिक दिस विल बी द लिमिट फ्रॉम लेवेंथ हारमोनिक टू सिक्सटीन दिस विल बी द लिमिट लाइक वाइज से फॉर एग्जाम्पल इफ द शार्ट सर्किट रेश दिस इज द शार्ट सर्किट रेश If the short circuit ratio is, for example, 35, then the limit will be 8 percent. If the short circuit ratio is higher, say for example 150, 15 will be the limit. So how this uh, short circuit ratio is uh, arrived? It's bit simpler, and empirically it is told the far away from the substation. EB substation, you will get a very tight limit. The fellow who is uh, very closer to the substation will be getting a 20% limit. A fellow in between will be getting around 12%, and the fellow is in, who is in the tail end, he is almost the last consumer in that circuit. Means he will be getting a very stringent limit of five. so this is the modified table according to tnrc regulations because this is not going for penalty so i have removed it and i have shown it as a comfortable table so people can understand it so we have to get isc by il value we have to refer the table and find out how much will be the base limit for us this tdd is called base limit this base limit will be again having Further relaxed limits, as shown in the next picture. Say, for example, the short circuit ratio is 64. So TDD, as per the earlier table, 64 comes here. So the limit is 12 percent. So I have written 12 here, 64 here. There will be three type of readings. Daily, there will be one reading as we. I have seen in voltage harmonics, but weekly there will be two percentiles. That is, 10-minute values will be two percentiles will be evaluated. So for daily, they are giving multiplication factor of two, so 12 becomes 24. So till 24 percent we can go, and the total number of samples will be 480, and five samples will be allowed to exceed this 24 percent. Same thing with weekly 10 minute, 1.5 will be the multiplication factor, so 18 percent. So out of 1,008 samples in a week, 10 samples can be exceeded. Similarly, for a 10 minute, the percentile comes down here, 95th percentile. So five percentile we can exceed. So five percentile is 50 readings we can comfortably exceed. Earlier, all these were 100 percentile. And without any multiplication factor, so it was flat eight percent. That is the reason many people could not achieve it. So now the IEEE has also understood the ground reality. The government has also understood the requirements, and they have started giving a big relaxation in these limits. So this is the GO given by TNERC on last year September. So what it says. current harmonic currents generated by loads of consumers are prosumers prosumers means who generate electricity and sell it to the electricity boards such as uh, grid interactive solar systems where electricity is generated they use self use they use then the excess energy is being uh, uh, given to the grid those of people are also uh, brought inside Connected to electric system 11, 22, 33, and above. So all HT consumers are covered, and these particularly charging stations. Charging stations means electric vehicle charging stations are brought under these limits. So using which meter they have to measure? So it is a addition three class A IEC 61,430 meter as only to be used. so uh, the electricity board was right now was using a different meter which is not complying to current uh, uh, regulations so they have to change they were using one particular brand and one particular model that that old meter cannot be used they have to purchase new meter and they have to come uh, for measurement uh, 
and every HD consumer will be measured for one week, one whole week. It is not that it will be for two hours, three hours. Somebody measures and says uh, you are not complaining. So it will be a whole week of measurement. And uh, for example, one, with using a meter, the every year, every year there are only 52 weeks. Probably 40, 46, 47 consumers only they will be able to cover. So they may need about 250 meters and uh, to cover all the 10,600 HD consumers in the uh, in our state. That is a large volume and I do not know what uh, they have done. And it is as per the regulations, one week measurements means they may have to have so many meters which will be put inside our uh, um, meter boxes in the HD side and they will be taking a reading for one whole week. So you don't have to worry like uh, before 70 percent load we have to give we have to give uh, 90 percent load these were the demands asked by the mrt before it is nothing like that you can you can run your industry as smooth as possible with whatever load you, you are running uh, it is sufficient because the values are divided by the il which is the maximum load current recorded over a period of 12 months. So the regulations are for the denominator for IL and numerator will be the THD values. So there will not be any issues. You can run the industries normally for a whole week and there will not be any issues uh, in the uh, penalty side or measurement issues may crop up. So all these values have to be measured. Highest among the uh, thing will be taken for levying penalty. So what, uh, how much time a consumer will get? Six months time will be given by after measurement. They serve you a notice. If you are complying, they will give you a, this much uh, this consumer is complying. If the consumer is not complying with the regulations, they will give you a notice and six months time will be given. This six months time, will not they will not charge any penalty. After six months time, further 12 months time will be given for the consumer to mitigate harmonics. So during this period, only penalty will be charged. Penalty is not flat 15%. Last time it was flat 15%. Either you you go uh, even 0.1% excess also, they don't they they don't mind. 8.1, 8.2, they, they give a flat 15% penalty, and it was a very cumbersome process. People were uh, put into a lot of difficulties. So totally, right now there will be 18 months time. And even after 18 months, there will be 30 days disconnection notice will be given. That only in the rare cases where people are not able to bring within limits, they will be giving a disconnection notice. But 18 months is a fairly normal time with which people will be able to mitigate is what we believe from our side. So how much is the penalty? This is the penalty table. For what penalty will be levied? For the current consumption charges. Current consumption charges means the demand charges and the energy charges. Both will be put together. It is called current consumption charges. So only for TDD, it is clearly mentioned only for TDD. TDD excess over and above limit. 3% if it is exceeding than the limit. The limit we, we saw already. The penalty will be 1%. It will be it's a ladder penalty. It will be a stepwise penalty. Above 3 up to 6 will be 2%. Like that the maximum penalty will be 10%. So penalty for 
there will not be any penalty for the first six months and for the next 12 months there will be only maximum penalty that that will be 10 percent so beyond that only they will be going for any disconnection and one more concession we are getting from this regulation is last time people will put some harmonic filter and they will reduce so 8.1 for 0.1 excess they were charging 15 percent penalty right now it is not like that till 8.49 that is what the bottom uh, thing tells till 8.49 the lower number will be considered say for example if your measurement shows 8.4 then your limit then your rating will be 8 percent only above 8.5 it will be termed as 9 percent so there is a concession in this uh, in this also so the, there was a lot of confusion uh, la, uh, last time sir 0.1 excess 0.2 excess we are charging like this there will be measurement uncertainty in meters measurement uncertainty in ctpt there are so many things practical things so you cannot charge like this there was people were arguing to bring an end to that argument the commission has given a, a very good a limit and they have uh, adjusted the whole numbers only whole numbers they have to take and how to make a whole number also they have this time they have given so how a measurement should be done it again i am telling it is addition 3 Edi addition 3 is the latest version which can be consistently measuring and accuracy levels will be there because it is a revenue based it has to go with an addition 3 meter and it has to be a class a meters and of i complying to iec 61000-4-30 standards there are class a meters which are addition 2.0 which should not be used for measuring harmonics because addition 3 and addition 2 they have differences in the measurement methods apart from the software apart from the meter the meter manufacturer will also give you a software for creating a report because so much of readings there will be thousands and thousands of readings which is impossible for any electrical engineer to find out the complaint so there will be a software for creating report so what are all the instruments there are uh, there are instruments in India which I have used two types of instruments. Both are good. One is Fluke. It's a popular company. Everybody knows. The above one is called 1748. This instrument is, it doesn't have a display here. A display is not needed according to me because every data will be grabbed by the computer. It will be transferred to the computer. This instrument has a Wi-Fi facility. Using Wi-Fi facility, we can go and get the data. That data can be comfortably analyzed in the office and we can find it out. So this is a, one of the latest model of uh, Fluke, which can measure supra harmonics. So this instrument also has similar facilities to that. Additionally, it has a display. Another instrument used is, uh, it's a, the, this one Fluke is a portable model. It can be shifted anywhere inside the factory or taken out. This one is a stationary model. It is panel mounted uh, meter. This is a Janitsa from Germany. This also has the similar features which we can connect it using our LAN system and we can take readings and we can do it. There are other meters also. Schneider in Germany is having Dranets USA, then Hayoki Japan. It is very very important if if at all a consumer wants to buy a meter it is very important to check that it is addition 3 first it should be addition 3 then class a then complying to these standards so further to this whatever meter there should be a software which which should be reliable for reporting the ieee compliance
so mitigation of harmonics how to mitigate harmonics in foundries there are <coughs> three methods most of the old furnaces are six pulse furnaces either it can be converted to 12 pulse or 24 pulse furnaces and it can be mitigated this is one method another method is using passive filters which are called detuned filters with the six pulse furnaces and in and non-linear loads this is the second method third method is active harmonic filter for six pulse furnaces all three will work but a mitigation method will is varying consumer to consumer this is what i would like to tell it is consumer to consumer varying it is because the consumer to consu consumer location point is totally every consumer will have a different limit for example in an industrial estate a person at the entrance of industrial estate will have one limit a person at the end of the industrial estate will have a different limit even in case of our own road the person at the uh, at at the one, one point of the road will have one limit and at the end of the road will have another limit. So this mitigation method cannot be generalized. In general, when we change the uh, pulse of the furnace, either 12 or 24, the commonly it can, it can solve many of the problems. So people around are changing the induction furnaces. In time to many people have changed. So that gives a big solution, but again, it will be, uh, there will be investment cost and there will be stopping of the foundry for uh, a week or 10 days, so conversion could be done. So it depends upon how uh, it should be done. So uh, it cannot be generally told, sir, change your furnace, uh, things will happen, it is okay or put a detuned filter, it will be okay, or put an active harmonic filter. So it is not a very generalized way, we cannot say. It will be consumer to consumer dependent on how much we are, uh, a particular consumer is exceeding. What is his limit? Say for example, his limit is 12% and his uh, TDD value is about 20%. That means a particular type of uh, uh, filter mitigation mechanism has to be followed and he has to bring. For example, if his uh, TDD is, uh, if his limit is 12% and he is, uh, uh, his TDD, measured TDD is only 13%, 1% excess, he can either install an active harmonic filter of lower capacity or a detailed filter and he can come out of the issues. So it is, uh, it is dependent on consumer to consumer. So this, this one I would like to share with people. I am very happy to share this slide. In our foundry, we have a 24 pulse furnace. We installed it during the COVID first lockdown. We were all busy removing the old furnace and installing the new furnace during the holidays. And soon after the first lockdown was over, we commissioned uh, we commissioned the furnace and it was uh, run and uh, readings were taken. So as per uh, 2014 norms, if we see, so let us not worry about the uh, voltage harmonics, which uh, my report shows as fail. This is because of a different reason. It shows a fail. There are nearby, there are some industries who are dumping harmonics and because of that only it is failing. It is not because of our, our own loads. Our own loads are complaining. So voltage harmonics is not our uh, purview. It is the purview of both of us. That is the discom and the consumer. It is a joint responsibility. So this fail should not be considered. So what happened is my current harmonics even after installing a 24 pulse furnace was not fully compliant only for a few days it was compliant for other days it was not compliant it was a big worry for us 
had also gone to the parents manufacturers and told them to uh, requested them for uh, technology so that all these things are uh, uh, corrected but luckily the standard itself in 2022 got uh, revised and just the same readings i used in 22 uh, standards all the uh, things are passed so what i uh, i could conclude is there was a limitation in the standard which the ieee has discussed and they have revised the standards i know the standards is perfect and nearly perfect and most of our consumers will be able to comfortably uh, comply to the standards so uh, 12 pulse and 24 pulse furnaces will be easily able to comply with this standard so thank you very much for the opportunity uh, southern region and uh, chennai chapter i'd like to show a small uh, video of how a measured value could be easily checked using a software and importance of the software could be seen in a one minute video this is a fluke uh, energy analyze uh, software given by fluke uh, instruments it can produce results to many uh, standards which i can show you so there are there are uh, options a drop down will come here at this point where we can easily this is the this is the drop down sorry where we can select the particular standard and we will be able to find out what will be the limits so these are the standards so we are worried only about ieee 519 so current standard is 2022 and the earliest standard is 2014 this is european standards and others are uh, russian standards um, some other Norwegian standard and all, which we are not worried. But this software will be able to uh, give reports for many uh, standards available. So just press the report. It takes about uh, 5 to 10 seconds to create a 130 page report, which will give all the details swell, sag, interruption, whatever regarding power quality, every detail will be given and it will be also. You can save it as a PDF. You can save it as a, uh, in some other format also. So hardly it takes a one week measurement for analyzing. It takes only a minute. This is what I would like to uh, tell our people. So without a software, it will be nearly impossible for us to uh, find out whether we are complying. So either the electricity board who are uh, bringing the meters will also be having software with them. Uh, and if people are interested to measure harmonics in, in their installations using third party or they want to invest on the meters themselves, they have to, when they are talking to the meter manufacturers, they have to request for software also. Usually it will be given uh, along with the instrument. So if, even if you miss it, you, you may have to ask uh, with them and uh, take the software. Without software, it is not possible to find out the complaints. So this brings uh, to the close of our uh, uh, session. And people who are having uh, any doubts uh, can uh, ask. The floor is open for your, uh, for your question. Any doubts? Members, please uh, ask any doubts uh, regarding the speech. Uh, good afternoon, sir. This is a very useful presentation and very knowledge sharing one, very informative. So normally, my question is that TNEB, how they will measure this? They will put, a, you are telling it to be measured seconds, weekly basis, whether they will come and measure it or they are going to install in the meter or something, how it will come? Sir, uh, the proposal is they want to install uh, the power quality meter uh, that is harmonic meter parallel to our uh, billing meter that's what we is used to our uh, it's called a billing meter now what uh, they use in that box inside that box so they'll be putting a parallel meter and they'll be uh, taking the measurements out. i can show you an example a meter also uh, this is the meter what uh, this, this is what i have similar to this meter uh, 
they'll be bringing plus the portable meter you, you can see it's uh, only this much is the size and it, the weight is also very less so this meter can be fixed very easily inside the box and for one week they'll be leaving uh, leaving it and uh, they have to take uh, reading after one week and give a report okay sir thank you sir thank you very much sir anybody who would like to ask uh, questions in tamil or any other uh, south indian language i'm comfortable absolutely no problem people can ask and uh, secondly we from iif team will be uh, we are willing to assist you when you get your notices you please bring uh, chennai chapter people please contact chennai chapter kanto chapter people contact contact kanto chapter i'll be available and i'll be i'll be able to help you out in uh, getting your issues solved any doubts regarding measurements mitigation we will definitely support you from iif this is a plan we have already discussed with muthu kumar sir also okay sir then uh, i think uh, we can close this uh, close yes. this seminar yeah uh, mr bengappa sir yeah sir namaskara sir think muthu kumar sir should we go for a word of thanks yeah yes sir i think there is no question so we can go with what of thanks okay i think uh, bengappa sir uh, line is got disconnected so on behalf of uh, if uh, sr and chennai chapter i thank mr sadul kumar for this uh, uh, beautiful presentation uh, so once again i thank uh, for spending the time with our members sir and uh, explaining so beautifully so i think uh, most of the people have been uh, confused uh, so so many things are there in this uh, subject and uh, how to work on that so after a few days they will come up with a lot of questions so once if any questions comes uh, we'll forward to you sir and uh, we we can give solution for our members yes sir yeah once again i thank, thank you, you sir. sir thank you so much yeah thank you sir thank you sir thank you weekend for all of you bye bye yeah thank you bye bye sir thank you sir